we're going into a sector instead of a classroom. Yes. And I think we're very lucky to have the school because every year it changes into this really good place. We're going to be finding that thing from the past. Really, yeah. really, really, really looking forward to it. Well, I'll be sector four. And I'll be sector three. See you later. Hi, agents. I'd like to hand you over to the director who has called this emergency briefing. Good morning, agents. Welcome to your first day of the Time Institute. The project that we're doing um, this time is called the Time Institute, and the kind of premise behind it for the children is that um, they are time agents who work at a government agency um, which investigates the past. And when they came to work on their first day as new agents, um, the director of the institute um, spoke to them and said that the arch enemy of the institute had escaped from his prison. And Vortex is the name of the enemy. And he's now kind of travelling through time, wreaking havoc and changing things um, as he wishes. When Vortex strikes, you will be alerted in your sector that an anomaly is taking place. Um, so they get their alert, they have to then essentially pull together all the evidence that they can find, the research that they can do to put a presentation together to present at the end of the week to the Time Council. You must work with your sectors to research and investigate the events and times that Vortex is trying to change. This is the only way we can stop Vortex from messing with time. Waiting for you in your sector is your first alert because Vortex has already started to mess things up. So, off we go. Business control. Time anomaly in progress. Vortex activity detected. Anomaly present in 1842. Epoch showing alteration to the reign of Queen Victoria. Please note your report must be delivered to the Time Council at 13.30 on Friday. Control out. Each week we get an alert to say this is your, you know, Vortex has been messing with the Fire of London or World War II. You need to sort this out and find out as much as you can about that to then present to the Time Council to see if we can put that back, if it's all correct, your evidence, see if we can put that back into the timeline. What do you think? Our time anomaly is Reese. The Victorians. Good lad. The Victorians. Who specifically? Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria. Right, for the first part of this morning, for about five minutes, in your teams, you're going to think of some questions that you would like to have answered about the Victorian period and about Queen Victoria. Do you think it was just last week the Victorian time period? No. How long ago do you think? A year ago? Yeah. Just a year ago? Yeah. When you were five? No. So do you think it was hundreds of years ago? Yeah. Yeah, do you? Should we maybe find that out then? Yeah. Do you think she's still alive? No. Yeah. You do? Well, why? Could we find... You think no and you think, yeah, could we maybe find that out then? Yeah. So maybe that could be our questions. One of our questions, is she still alive? Right, if you think you've got a good question... Pop your hand up. When was the uh, Queen become Queen? When did she become Queen? That's a really good question. Did Victorians have a family? Did they have families? Do you think they did have families? I don't know. You don't know? Mm, that's an interesting one, James. What did they eat? What, what did they eat? Right, good question. <coughs> Dylan had a conversation with me and said he didn't think they'd have Xboxes and Playstations. Was it you, Dylan? Yeah. He said they'd have what kind of toys, Dylan? Like like wood ones. Wooden like, toys. Like wooden toys, but you would have an unders. How do you think you're going to find those things out? How do you think you're going to find out about all of the, those things? 
Just talk on your bench about how we're going to find this information out. The thinking behind the, the project um, is really based on the six core attributes that as a school and as a staff we've um, worked over the past year to develop into our curriculum and so looking at the kind of ways that children work and the skills that they are going to need and that are going to stand them in good stead to go on and be able to learn essentially and do well in the future. So we came up with this as a school something called the six core attributes and it was basically the skills that we want our children to leave Bedlington Station First School having and it was a, to be a confident child, um, a competent communicator, a motivated achiever, independent individual, inquisitive learner and emotionally literate. So basically that is what we're focusing on th through this project and it's about getting the children as well to recognise that yes it's good to have knowledge but it's skills that we want them to acquire so that they can apply them to different situations and different things that we present them with. Well, if we wanted to be age 12 and learn about that, we could just read it. Right, so we wanted to be on that one, we could just go on that one. Rescue service. That's a rescue service. Robbie came back to him was 18 years old when she came to Queen when she would have been still in college. I think the least find the oldest of them, put them in order. It has to be that. Like I have to cook. It's an old fashioned camera. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think you would like to be alive in this time? Do you? Why? It, I think I would be, want to be um, doing stuff like that. What? You would like to work in the coal mines? Would you? Why? Because it, it sounds a bit um, hard working and, and I like working in So you would like to work some hard work? Yeah. I want to go in the coal mines because it builds your muscles up, oh, gets you your strong. Out, Robbie. Yeah. It's difficult when you're looking at history to have that physical hands-on kind of approach. So we kind of bet the laws of reality a little bit and decided that we would have some sort of machine, time machine essentially, that we could bring people back from the past. So you're going to think, who do you want to come through the Epoch machine this week so that we can check that all of the information we have found out is true. It's, it's been really valuable for them after they've done their research to speak to somebody who was, you know, kind of really there um, to double check facts and that sort of thing. So they, we designed and built the um, Epoch machine. Hello, this is Zach, your resident Epoch technician. Just to let you know, the evidence you requested will be arriving in the E-Zone at 1330 hours. I hope it helps. Please remember that no artifacts or witnesses can be removed from the E-Zone. Zach out. Um, we're going to the Epoch machine to uh, visit Queen Victoria. And we're going to ask her some questions about her family and, che and check some answers were found. You may stand for your queen. You may sit. I have no idea where I am. Yeah, in the epoch machine. The epoch from. machine? Yeah. Right. Well, I'm glad I'm in England. I've been finding out about you on, on, in the books. Have you? Yeah. Where 
you definitely the Queen of England? Oh, yes. <laughs> Was it true that you married your cousin Albert? What was it like having a lonely childhood and just living with your mother? I think there are some children who obviously do know that, you know, this is set up by us. But I think they want to believe that, you know, they are at work and this is, this is real. I do think it just kind of gives it that bit of lift and it really excites them and engages them and makes them that bit more motivated. It's time for you to go on out. Is it time for me to go? Thank you. It was very nice to meet you all. That was excellent. So that tells me that all of the research you've been doing from the internet and from the books has been true and you've done an absolutely fantastic job. So well done, Time Agents. I, was, I thought she was going to be like really old, but she was like really young. And I wanted to go in with her. She's got blonde hair. Yeah. And she's got a uh, of things on the back of what girls have. <laughs> and when she, she came in, she was like this all the time. London. She lived in London. She was born in London. She was. Yes, she was. Wasn't she, James? Why are we asking questions in the first place? Cause, see, if, oh, she's all right. Because they were all, oh, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> So is that nice to see that all your all your yeah. Because right? yeah, because you don't know if it's right. Because she she lives in Victoria, and oh, we don't, so we so she must know a lot than us. They just seem to really enjoy the way that we're working. It's it is different. Um, you know, they're having to be more responsible, more independent. So it's definitely improving those skills, more teamwork, sorting things out themselves. So. I definitely think overall that the children are more engaged, more motivated and can see a purpose to why we're doing it. So that's the part I've been making today.